Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Horse Center tonight. Swiss Army Sean and our special guest doesn't really need much of an introduction. Hall of Fame jockey Javier Castellano. Javier, how are you this evening? Good, very good, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, how, how's the summer at Saratoga treating you? Really well. Thank God, doing really well. Yeah. It's, it's competitive game. It's a lot of good riding. Thank God, doing really well. Mm -hmm. So this weekend is one of the uh, the big races, right, coming up at Saratoga, the Travers. Isn't that this weekend or is that next weekend? Next week. Next weekend. All right. So two weeks from now. Um, you've had a lot of success with that race. Why do you feel like uh, you're the number one winner of the Travers? Very lucky, very successful, and very blessed to <clears throat> to win six Travers. Um, I can't remember when I rode the first time, the first Travers with Fernandini. I was uh, like very excited to win my first Travers. I I, I remember one day, as soon as I won the race, I told my mom, well, at least I can walk away. I can say I won the first trial in my life. I ended up with two six winning. And I think I believe I've been very blessed in this game. Mm -hmm. What What is it about Saratoga that you feel like you have a lot of success there? It's a track a lot of people struggle at. doesn't seem like it's one that you struggle at at all. Uh, like I say, yeah, a lot of support, a lot of training. They give me opportunity to ride the best horses in the country. And my agents, they've been doing really such a great job with my horses, try to pick the right horses to win the big races in the country. And I think that, you know, it's competitive. When you focus, you did be disciplined and try to ride in the best colony in the country. You have to be dictate when you 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 gain and you have to be a lot of discipline a lot of dedication and i think it worked out like being pay off mm -hmm. so you you learned your craft as a young man in venezuela correct that's right tell us a little bit about your upbringing in venezuela and i heard you say before that when someone asked you what would you be if you weren't a jockey you said well i don't really have a choice <laughs> this is what i was going to be from birth so from birth in Venezuela, t take us into how you got into horse racing. Absolutely. I think you can see uh, it's very obvious. Yeah, a lot of people from Venezuela, they play baseball. And the major league, uh, you see a lot of people that come from Venezuela, they, like Miguel Cabrera, a lot of a lot of good players. You know, I can mention, you know, I can think about the name right now. But <clears throat> that's where we grew up in Venezuela, a lot of baseball. And I've been playing baseball when I was a little kid and so tried to grow up. But, but my father, just a really resident man, can I give you a little story about my background? My father was a jockey and he rode for 25 years. And my uncle, the other side from my mom, and he was a jockey too. And when my dad started, you know, riding since I was five years old, I have a sense. And I always want to be jockeys. And, but my father unfortunately went through a couple of stuff in the life. He got hurt a lot. And I think all my family, my mom, my my uncles and my aunt, they don't wanna see me go through to those things. They it's dangerous. You have to face every single day in horse races. Jockey's not easy. Jockey's the people think it's easy, but it's the only sport the ambulance he follow with you for one reason. And you, you don't see any sport, the ambulance he follow it at all. I think it does mean something is very dangerous. And I respect that. And I think it's very lucky, fortunate to be where I am right now. And lucky, my father, my mom, my family, they support my wife, my kids, and we support my career. But it's it really tough. And I think I grew up that way. I, I don't want to see my son. He can tell me I want to be jockey. <laughs> I don't want to live the same way my dad, he told me to do that. But you never know what just gonna, life is going to give it to you. Like I say, I've been very blessed and lucky, fortunate to be where I am. The one, the top jack in the country and and well deserved everything out. And I think I'll be continue to be successful. So you were the top jockey, what, the Eclipse winning award winner five, six years in a row, right? Where you won the most money. In fact, you 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 still own the record for the most winnings in a year, correct? Absolutely, yes, it is. And you actually beat your record, so you're kind of like the Wayne Gretzky of hockey, where you have two records that nobody else has. <laughs> yeah, very lucky, 
fortunate and the don't get me wrong a lot of help the, is I put everything together agents is team effort my agent my trainers and again my horses and my owner they give me opportunity to ride the best opportunity in the life and like anything else you have to you have to enjoy and you have to be very lucky in the right place in the right time to win the, all the races mm -hmm. so javier for 21 years in a row from 1998 to 2018 you had a thousand plus mounts every single year um how incredibly hard is that? And then also, how temp how tough has the last couple of years been when you've had COVID, you've had the injury where you had the surgery, that kind of stuff? Absolutely. In 2020, it been devastated for not only myself, for everybody in the in the world and, and the earth, if you think about it. And <clears throat> it's not only in this country, in every single country. In 2020, uh, I, on the, I believe... I'm the only jockey I've been diagnosed with COVID-19. I think in believing in March, the first week to the Florida Derby, and I was in New York. I had to fly back to Florida to ride the Florida Derby, and they test all the jockey because and the New York jockey he come from the epicenter, and they want to test the jockeys. And I was really, really fine. I was jogging all week and galloping horses, breezy horses, jogging for three miles, lose weight, like I always do, try to be 100% to perform for that day, that weekend. And they told me I'm, I'm, I have the COVID-19. I couldn't believe it myself. And I told the doctor and I tried to tell her, are you right? I spell my name. First name, last name, I date my birthday, my where I come from, when I told, I want to make sure maybe that somebody made a mistake here. And they say it was. And thank God I've been very lucky for sure. I had to quarantine for two weeks and not any symptoms at all. Um, and that part, it made me feel good. But the other part, business wise, I lose a lot of business. And I had to be quarantined for two weeks. By the time you get the other test, you lose three weeks. People, they don't realize how it's compared to this game. When Jackie lose two, three weeks, it's about, about three months. You lose three months, it's about six, nine months. Because those horses you've been not riding, somebody's going to ride for you. And you lose those months. It's very competitive. We feel like a very lucky fortune to be where we are, the level we are, and the NF, NF, and, and the major league. And they all compare. If you lose the opportunity, somebody's going to be right next to you. Three, four, five guys, it cannot replace it to you. And unfortunately, I lose in the beginning of my, the 2020. and the end 2020, I had to have a Lebron repair for my hip. One hip I had to replace a little bit, not replace it, just to labor and repair a little bit. And the doctor, he told me about three months. All those things, I think it pushed me back in 2021 to recall my, myself, my business, and I lose all the moment. And I think it maybe you can see lately, little by little in 2022, I recover all my business and try to show all the people who Javier Castellano. Absolutely. How how long when you come back from something like that? You're out two to three weeks. How many mounts do you think it takes to get back to yourself? It's a lot. It's a lot. It's hard to um, to describe it. Uh, it's a lot to to say what number you are, but it's hard. You have to be dedicated yourself. You have to prove the basically. I had to prove myself from the beginning. Because you knock at the door and they don't open to you, you have to tell it who you are, basically. I have your Castellano, basically you started from the beginning. And you have to prove yourself a little bit. When you they give you opportunity, you have to get it down the job. That's the one reason this game, I don't I don't take anything from grant, granted. And I always say that, I don't care what you did like yesterday or what you did the, the past, it's what you do today. In other sports, to get in the Hall of Fame, you got to be retired so long, 
you know, that kind of thing. You're in the Hall of Fame 2017 and you're still riding and being very successful. How cool is that to know you're already in the Hall of Fame and you're just adding to your contrib con contributions? Absolutely. I'm very lucky to be Hall of Fame and still I can perform and I still be enjoy my basically my title on Hall of Fame riding and still be competing in the game. And any sports, I believe, and like, let's put it simple, baseball. And when you play baseball, you have to retire first. And you have to wait five years after retire to be nominated to Hall of Fame. At least we're very lucky, fortunate to be on Hall of Fame. I still ride horses. I think could be competitive with my, my friends. What I also found interesting is looking up when you got your 1,000th win, your 2,000th win, your 3,000 win and your 4,000 win, they were all in Florida. Your 5,000 win finally came in New York where you spent most of your time. What did that mean to you? A lot, a lot. Because when I started in, in New York, it was in 2001. Basically, I spent 22 years in New York, one of the biggest, biggest, tough spa, tough restaurant in the country because they're really, really competitive. And you have to compare every single day with the best jockey in the world. And to be successful, to win my millennium, you know, all the big races and hearts, you know, don't get me wrong. They don't, they don't give away to you. You have to earn it yourself and you have to be dictated and you have to be disciplined. You have to be competitive every single day. And very lucky to win my 5,000 win in your and Trust me, I was very, really happy. Rich and I were at Saratoga for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Do you think young jo jockeys get distracted at all by all what's around the Saratoga and you guys walking through the crowd and all that stuff? Do you think there's a lot of distractions there? A lot. It is true. If you're not focused on what you're doing, you can lose all our like, concentration. And it's very competitive. We had the best colony in the country. They're all here. But a little something you miss, a lot of three, four jockeys can replace it to you. That's what I mean. You have to be very focused because a lot of people, a lot of training, a lot of on it, a lot of jockeys, a lot of fans. We believe we have almost 20,000 people every single day in Saratoga. It's amazing. When you go Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you see a lot of time. A lot of people in the restaurant, in the grandstand, you're looking for racing roof for you. But those things are little, you miss it, people right behind you is just kind of replace what you made mistake. Mm. Yeah, you mentioned that you got the COVID, but you didn't get the illness. I got the COVID when I was at Saratoga, and it looks like that past week, maybe there was a little bit of a super spreader event there because the Red Joel got sick. They didn't test positive yet, but uh, the young apprentice jockey Gomez got the uh, the uh, the coronavirus. So when that happens, the coronavirus in the jocks room, what kind of precautions do they take? Because you guys are on tight quarters all the time. Do you, when you hear somebody test positive, does everybody have kind of a, Oh, no feeling? Trust me. And we go with, we go with the flow basically. And the country, that's what I think is legally been seen like that. And I remember when I was the, they told me I was Kobe. People, they thought about, oh my God, you're gonna die. You gone, you out. And that's the fake, I had to face my life, the fear I had to face in my life when the first time they told me. Right now, it basically not much. Basically they told people, oh, you got the Kobe, you got the flu, you go home, five days, you come back, you're good to go. I sure you don't have to take any test to come back. Only basically you have to basically the, the guideline is five days out and you come back. Mm -hmm. We don't think about too much because everybody focuses here in Saratoga to win races, to be competitive, to ride horses. And athlete, trust me, we we very lucky because we do every single day. We we perform the way we perform. We all the prepare. We do a lot of equipment exercises and and we try to be in good shape we eat really well and try to make the weight and i think it does i think it would take a little advantage for somebody else and other people regular people in the world mm. 
Robert Bryan says, yeah, how nice is it to see all of those fans, though? Because that is got to be a lot of tracks you go to. There's not a lot of fans at the track. Most of the action is online. So how nice is it to look up into the audience and see 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people on a weekend cheering um, as you come down the stretch? Absolutely. I'm very, very lucky to be to different places, to ride different places in South Florida and Kentucky and New York and California and different little places like any place around the world. And when you open in date and when you see open the first week to Wednesday and open the door, you see 20,000, 20, 25,000 people around to you and they're cheer for you, they cheer for the race, they cheer for the horses. And you look up at the grandstand, you feel all the 20,000 people around. They say, oh my God, this is what I'm talking about. This is where we are. You feel great, you feel good, you feel positive, you feel your adrenaline start popping up a little bit. And you, no matter what, how you feel, you wanna give it 200% and your horses because you feel like the people they are looking for you, you wanna give it back to them. 100%. Mm -hmm. You want to guarantee his money. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's a lot of, I mean, they got nice purses there for sure. So I'm sure that helps you too when you bring home a couple nice purses. <laughs> I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that the, the missus and the kids like it when dad wins more than when dad doesn't win uh, for sure. So speaking of winning, you've done a lot of winning at the Breeders' Cup. Are you looking forward to the Breeders' Cup this year at Keeneland? How special will that be? Yeah, we all do. You know, I'm very, you know, uh, um, work hard, develop the horses, try to do the right thing for the horses and be very lucky to, I mean, I hope we have the opportunity to ride the best horses in the country and to ride to the best top training in the country, to be honest, and they give the opportunity to to perform and hopefully you start developing horses for the British Cup. It's hard to do that, you know, but you never know. In this game, a lot of pieces, they move together really quick. You can have a lot of horses, good horses now for perform for the Breeders Cup. A lot of things can happen every single day. But we work hard. We try to do the right thing for the horses and hopefully develop the good horses for the end, the, end, the end of the year. Hmm. So let's see. Tomorrow you have uh, Proven Hope. I don't see Proven Hope. Yes, in race number seven. Charles says tomorrow you have Proven Hope. It looks like it's race number seven, though, Charles. It's a key horse in his place. Is it going to win tomorrow for Charles? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm going to give you 100% for winter race. <laughs> All right. There you go, It's Charles. a good horse. He's a really nice horse. He's doing really well. I hope he, you know, we, I'm very optimistic. I think it's going to put a good show tomorrow. So tomorrow you have, well, it looks like seven mounts. And then on, uh, on Thursday, it looks like you have a mount in just about every race but one. So when you have those days where it goes race, 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 how much time, I know you have like 20, 25 minutes, but how fast does that time go between races when you have mount after mount after mount after mount? Well, basically you prepare yourself the one day before or maybe the same day in the morning. You work out horses in the morning early and the morning same day. And then you go back to the jock row and you take a little break and you basically you handicap it all the car you wait for the scratches or the change a lot of horses they scratch a lot of horses they change the jockeys a lot of things happen in the last minute that's what happened you can anticipate yourself to be prepared to ride to handicap the race because a lot of things can happen and you wait for the same day you handicap your race every single race you refresh you you mind every single horse you've been riding or somebody else you watch a replay a little bit and you can have the idea what's going on and by the time you start rolling you by the time you start you know ride horses and you might start working up a, a little bit and trust me jackie they're very very professional they handicap the race but at the same time do you see any move they be prepared what anticipate what's gonna happen I think it does kind of be this successful to be winning the races. Mm -hmm. Thinking about it, when we were at Saratoga, do the jockeys have to walk a lot more before and after the race at Saratoga than any other track? Yes, you're right, 100%. Jockey have to walk a little more 
is a little far from the jack room all the way to the grandstand for the party. And the party, you have to go back to the to back to the jack room. It's a little longer stretch to walk around a little bit, especially in the summertime when it's really hot. You have to you have to walk a little bit. You have to work a lot more exercise a little bit. You do it more than any restaurant in the country. Um, speaking of horses, what's the best horse you you've ever ridden or that you like to ride the most? I mean, one of the best horses I ever rode in my life it was Gosap. Gosap is, um, I would say, because he won the Breeders' Cup 2004, and he brought the track record in 2004, 159 and change. It's still a track record. And he the best horse. He pulled me myself in the map a little bit. I was Javier Castellano in the little leading jockey. He went race over here, over there. But it was in the next step. I think it goes up. He pulled me all the way. My first British Cup, my first British Cup classic. After that, I think people who realized who, who was myself. But besides family, who really helped you in your career when you first came in? My father. My father was the, the biggest support in my career. And my uncle, Celio Gonzalez, he was my my two support in my career. Those two people, they helped me a little bit. I went to the track and they support me. They teach me how to ride the horses. And, and not even inside, outside the restaurant, I put my, a lot of examples, a lot of top jockeys and they teach me a lot of questions you know when every time i ask you some question the answer was right there did you have any jockeys that kind of took you under the wing besides your family no not really i think it um i always look out for my role model my father i always look out for him be time in my country i moved to this country and and, and i learned it i'm very lucky to ride with the top best country and uh, I think in so many decades I think it was Jerry Bailey, Pat Day, Jose Santo, Edgar Prado, you know, uh, John Velasquez, um, Julie Cron, Chen Sele, and, and a lot, a lot of jockey. I think I wrote maybe one, two times with a Philippe K, that's it, because it was East Coast. Um, but it's been my it's me. I spend it in the East Coast a lot of time to 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 ride with those top country, you know, jockeys. Um, and I learned a lot. I think it, to me, one of the biggest model, and I always say, is John Velasquez. John Velasquez is, is one of the biggest role model jockeys I ever I ever see in my life. I think it's inside, outside, the way he. He conducted himself the way he inside the races, the way he support the races, the way he teach people, the way he want to give it back to the to the industry, the whole race. I think it's to me it's like him. I don't think now I see anything like that, like John Velasquez. Hmm. So Charles wants to know, you know, Saratoga is known as the graveyard of favorites. Why is it difficult for favorites to win there? Competitive. Uh, competitive, I think it's uh, that's the reason we are here because they pick the best. If you realize it, they pick the best jockey in the world in the country to be participating at the same time in the short time too, as well. Because it's not only we don't have a long term, you have only six weeks and everybody go to boom, 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 only six weeks. You only have one opportunity, you lose. The other guy who was next to you is going to take it away to you. I think it is not a second chance here. Mm -hmm. It's like the Super Bowl. And if they give you the ball, you have to make it. If you don't make it, somebody is going to take it away to you. I think it is really, really competitive. And we have new generation, new, a lot of young riders that do really well. And this kind of replace it to you really quick. And I think you have to be prepared. You have to be very focused to do the job because a lot of people behind you is going to replace it to you. Mm. See, Javier is one of the best. Top 20 all time for sure, I think, probably. But we're we're, we're going to go with top five for sure, right? Top one. <laughs> <laughs> Can you pull me three? Number three. Yeah, we'll go with number three. How about number three, right? Three, two, three, top. Yeah. 
Uh, so John Velasquez is close to winning a thousand at Saratoga, right? I mean, that's a, that's a lot of race, won a lot of races everywhere. Seems like this year when we were there, I noticed uh, at Saratoga, and I've noticed since that seems like there's an inside three bias. It looks like a lot of horses, one, two, three, and sometimes four are winning. Is there something going on at the track that's given these inside horses a little bit of an advantage this summer? Uh, I don't think so. I think it is. It's... That's the way you've been playing a little bit. I think it seems to me the track is not as really fast lately, like the way we all see in the past. A little horses come from behind a little bit, I see. But been pretty fair for everybody. I think I believe so. I think it's, it seems to me a lot of good jockey. They ride so well. I think you don't see a lot of mistakes here. I think everybody's competitive. I think it's right being played pretty fair. A little, um, horses seem to me a little off the pace and win races. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think in the last week, I see a lot of horses went to the lead too. I mm -hmm. think I didn't pay attention more to that. I think I pay more attention how you can perform your horse, how you can play your horse in the right spot to win the race. Mm -hmm. Well, the one race that you haven't gotten yet is the Kentucky Derby. So, in your mind, I'm sure you've seen yourself winning the Derby countless times. When you finally do win the Derby, how are you going to celebrate? I'm um, unbelievable. I don't know how do I can uh, celebrate. Trust me, uh, that's the one race I've been chasing. When I just uh, sign up for my first license to be jockeys, when I see the license, the first jockey, I say, "Oh, I want to win the, I want to win the Derby. I want to win the Derby." And it was in Venezuela when I, I was my first license. And I laugh at myself because first of all, you need to right here and then you step up in another country. I said, but I've been working hard every single year and try to find the right horse in the right place. But I don't know, whatever guys give it to you and you have to be blessed with what we have. And uh, trust me, I've been chasing it was my dream. I hopefully can come through to win the Derby. I've been riding Derby like 13 times, 14 times. And the the most close I ever had, it was finished third, almost second. I thought at one moment it was finished second. But I still chase it. I hope the guy give me the opportunity to to win the race at one point in my life and to win the Derby. Hmm. I'll, I'll ask you this in August. I will not ask you this in April or May, but... Is it something that day, do you really think about it that day or do you take it the same as it's a normal day of race and, you know, I'm going to do my thing? I do on my team because, trust me, you, every single, every time when you perform, you have some goal. It's, uh, you, we always chase something. Um, this time of the year, I want to chase something. I, this time of the year, you find the best three-year-old. The best time of the year you want to ride the best horses for the classic. And now we are looking for to ride the best horses for the British Cup this time of the year. Everybody chases something. And I think in my biggest challenge right now is to ride the best horses to perform to the British Cup. It's going to be in the next couple months. But as soon as you put the British Cup, you might just think about what the best three year old you can find it for the. The best two year old you can find for the next year is going to end up the three year old to campaign to win the Kentucky Derby. And every and then when you win the Derby, you're looking for the pet horse to win the premium. Every single day, every single time, every single day, you have something challenging. That's the 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 beauty to the art sport. You have something to challenge you. You win the hopefully you can win the Kentucky Derby. Hopefully you win the premium. Hopefully you win the, the Belmont. The triple count, and after the triple count, okay, let's go to Saratoga. Let's try to win the travel and one of the biggest races, the best three year old in the country. And you always challenge you something. I think you might always think about how you can perform to find the best horse in the right moment, the right time. Mm -hmm. So, speaking of challenges, this year has been a little bit of a challenge in that the hiss is coming in. You've been around for quite a while, probably grew up and uh, learned uh, counting whips, it probably wasn't a part of your. Uh, uh, you're learning as you were a young man in Venezuela when you first got here. So how do you find yourself adjusting to the new rules? It's really tough because you have to adjust yourself a little bit after you ride so many years. 
you can overdo it so much. You have to be an opportunity to ride it the way he's, he's running. But trust me, it's not easy. It's a bigger challenge because every horse has a different style. Some horses, they don't need too much to overdo it. But some horses, you have to stimulate a little bit yourself to encourage to win the race. That's the horse is going to pay the price. And I think, but you have to just me where we live right now. How is it put the new rule? It's a new rule for every and everywhere in the country. And you only have to hit it six times. Trust me, the consequences of being suffered for every single one. And we pay the price basically. And hopefully we can we can do something better for the future. I know they had different balances and the high side and the jockey skill and the horsemen association and the industry horse races because we don't want to punish the only, the better and anybody else. I think uh, we have to look out for the best for every single one, even for the horses. And we've been changed a lot of things in the last past, the last decades. We don't use the same crop we've been using for many years ago. We use a different crop. We use uh, whatever you call the the font. The is is very soft. Even I can grab myself. I can hit it right in my face, and it doesn't hurt anything. He made a lot of noise because that's the point. The point is stimulate your horse to look up for to better faster way to go for is you encourage yourself the horse to popping up a little bit to wake him up a little bit in the races not to punish the horse to to go faster because i don't think i believe that's the reason the reason is the way you manage your horse to to make a better horse to the finish line first mm-hmm. What do you say to the people that, you know, those people that are out there that, oh, horse racing abuses the horses and stuff like that? Um, I mean, I see how much you guys care about them and stuff. Explain a little bit of that. What goes on that people don't see? Well, is it, trust me, we take care of the horses because we love horses. Um, I've been right for so many years. I live out of the horse. If the horse took it away, I'm not going to make a live. And that's the reason I'm looking for. And is, is wonderful, beautiful horses. People, they don't see the other side, how we manage the horse, how we take care of the horse every single day. You don't see the other side to the races. You don't see to the bad stretch. The people wake up at 4.30 in the morning, 3.45 in the morning, they grow and take care of the horse. They give it the best food. They give it the best water. They give it the best taking care every single day for the horses and then we clean the horses, we take in the horses, they walk the horses. And trust me, if you see the way the horse he live, better the human being. And and the jockeys they always take the horses and we don't abuse the horses. We try to do the best right thing for the horses. And it's the one thing the people see in the grindstone where we hit the horse we they think we punish the horse. We don't punish the horse. You just to wake him up, the horse encourage it. They go faster. Trust me, they're total bred racing. They're total bred horses. They like to go fast. They don't like to go slow. They like to go fast. It's the way you manage your horse, how you perform your horse to make it faster. Some horses, you are, you are, I ask a little bit early, they're not gonna finish. Horses, they're too fast. You have to manage the speed. And they, it's it's a lot of things going on. If a horse is a little bit lazy, now I wouldn't say lazy. I would say slow out of the gate, but they think really good in the end. It's all depending the pilot, the jockey, the way you ride the horse, the way you can manage the horse. That's what the people they say. The greatest jockey is it's not about how you strong you ride. It's about your mind and your hands. Some people they call jockey ice man. What do you call this guy Ice Man? Because the way you have it, the way you have it, your sense with the horses are not the sense and you manage the horses to perform the best horse to win the race. Mm-hmm. I think you're I think you're covering your phone speaker. You really went quiet there. Yeah, your volume went down a little bit for sure. All right, Sean. Um, any final questions for Javier? I just have one um, one last question. Your kids, do they like horse racing and do they have any future in horse racing? 
No, I have two daughters and and my little boy is staying, start asking a lot of questions and about horse races and he, he, he doesn't have much idea. Now he start getting into a little bit and he start to explore himself how the horse is doing. And at one point I, I think I don't surprise me, he's gonna say something to me. I want to ride horses. That's gonna be another <laughs> another problem. Yeah, but it'll be all right. You you did it. They'll be able to do it as well. No no problem for sure. Well, we appreciate your time tonight, Javier. We hope to see you uh, continued success at the Travers. But we want to see you get that uh, better roses coming up in twenty twenty three. Thank you guys. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it for the help. Thank you Thank and you. have a fantastic evening. That's why. Right. Thank Bye -bye. you. All right, Sean. Back to the uh, the big head for you, my friend. <laughs> so a lot of fun. Sorry we got off to a little bit of a late start there. Just a little bit of technical issues trying to connect with Javier, but it was definitely worth the uh the the wait, I would say, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we got to say hi to him real quick when we were there a couple weeks ago. A really nice guy and another guy that just, you know, um, like Robert said too, he got to take a picture with him and he, he'll take time for his fans and he'll take time for us. So mm -hmm. always great. And a lot to talk about with as much as he's accomplished, man. Oh, for sure. And then uh, speaking of him, he, he kind of alluded to this in the course of the conversation, but the Jockeys Guild issues a statement on its lawsuit against Hissa. It's just quite an interesting story because they have a litany of uh, issues with the Hissa here. Lack of centralized database to track jockey concussions, registration and annual physicals. Lack of guidelines when a jockey can return following injuries other than concussions. The fact that HISA rules penalize jockeys and only jockeys with a point system. And, I mean, you can just see there's a list and a list and a list. So as it um, as it's kind of proved out early on in the whole HISA, it looks to me like there is a little bit of um, – well, it looks like the jockeys either want less punishment or other people punished. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're just going to keep hearing story after story with uh, Hissa, so mm. we'll see. Well, it, it does seem like, because the jockeys, I know that he had mentioned, I think John Velasquez was one of the few, I think the only jockey representative in the whole Hissa thing, and then he had to uh, recuse himself from some of this stuff from what I read in the article. So uh, it seems to me that, you know, the jockeys are, you know, they, they – they do seem to be on the the short end of the uh, of the new nerf like whip when it comes to the penalties and so forth. Uh, so I would imagine that the, you know the, it was with great um, hesitation that they entered into a lawsuit because I know that they were kind of looking forward to uniform rules and so forth. So I, I just feel like maybe they rushed a little bit. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, they well, of course, they definitely rushed. Uh, this should have definitely been pushed off um, because now they keep changing things anyway. So I feel like they should have got everything in a row and they should have worked with people like Jalon, John Velasquez. You know, we've talked about that for a while. They should have worked with him a long time ago. I think they should have gotten like a, you know, almost, you know, like send out a survey to all the jockeys, right? And see what came back. And same thing to the owners and the trainers. And, you know, even the, I, I think to some degree, the fans should have had some opportunity to speak up too, right? Because right. It's, and you, it, you know, we, we talk about this whip and stuff and I, I've still not seen the whip and I would love to see the, see the whip and feel there. I feel like some of these tracks should do some kind of seminars to, you know, go over some of this basic stuff that, your average fan or, you know, well, I've said, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I'm willing to do two things. I'm willing to get buzzed <laughs> by one of the buzzers and get whipped by the whip and I'll report back, you know, I'll do it for I'd, charity. Uh, the buzzer will definitely bother you a lot more than the whip. I would imagine. Mm, I um, guess we'll the, see. The, the whip shouldn't do anything, at least from what we've uh, heard. Mm, yeah. Well, I, like I said, I'm willing to do it. I'll do it for <laughs> charity for every second that I uh, can withstand the buzzer and for every crack I get from the whip. If people can donate some money, we'll give it to Thoroughbred Aftercare and to the Jockeys Care Club as well. So, um, and then, uh, so tomorrow we have it on Eric Cancel, correct? Yep, another NYRA jockey. Um, he's starting to pick it up a little bit. We were, you know, he was struggling. Uh, when we were there, he won the last race on the turf. And then uh, a couple of days ago, I think it was Saturday, he won another race on the turf. So he's starting to pick it up a little bit. And then on, on Thursday, we'll have Dave, David Aragona. 
Tom yes. and I will be back yep. on Friday for Foreign Fridays. He sent me the list of stuff today, but I forgot what it is. Terry will return tomorrow. We'll be covering Saratoga. Had a okay day today at Colonial Downs. A couple two horses came in as bombs. Um, you know, I, my long shot won, but it ended up going off at five to two in the course of the you know, when the odds still first opened, it went up to like 15 to one, but then it got bet hard. Must be everybody turned on the show after that. Hit the uh, hot dog pick four at the end. So was pretty happy about that. Would have liked to hit a couple of those bomb twos along the way. Charles mentioned he had it in the second race. So con good congratulations on that, Charles. Um, Thursday, we'll do Delmar. Uh, Saturday, uh, Chris and Eddie will be back. I think they're going to do a lot of the card for Saratoga for their spot plays. And I think that pretty much wraps up everything we're going to do this week. If you haven't done so already, please head on over to the picks by for the picks with the professor tonight going with the Cleveland Indians oh, guardians. I'm sorry. Uh, forgive me. I, you know, much like the whip rule. I used to the <laughs> older name, not the newer name, the guardians tonight at plus plus one thirty six. Eric doesn't get the credit he deserves with the mounts he gets. Indeed, for sure. I agree with you on that, Lloyd. So we'll find out more from Eric tomorrow. Sean, any final thoughts before we get out of here today? Well, well, you made it. You're starting to influence the odds now. It's two days in a row. You picked a winner that the morning line was, you know, decent six to one, and you know whatever the other one was, and then it was it eight to one down. this morning and six to one yesterday, and the one yesterday yeah. went from one to one. So you're starting to five in, to two. You're gonna you're it, gonna blame me. You've influenced the odds now, so you've made it big. Time, I made right? it. Woo. <laughs> yeah, anyway, anyway. All right, Sean. So that takes us wire to wire on Tuesday. We'll see everybody tomorrow again. Uh, with Eric Cancel in the evening, Terry and I covering Saratoga. If you have any uh, good, if you have uh, any comments or you want to, you know, share your picks with us tomorrow for Saratoga, make sure you chime in. Hit us up in the comments section. Let us know. We always appreciate it. It's a community. All right, Sean. No matter what you do for the rest of this evening, certainly hope that you have good health and that uh, whatever you do, it ends up in the winner circle. Indeed. Have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow.